How much does it cost for us to stay for a month in the winter in the Algarve? That is a really good question, Tine. But before we get into that, we are Tina and Norm, and we talk all things retirement and a little bit of travel. Yes, we do. And if you haven't already subscribed, we would appreciate if you could hit that subscribe button and give us a... Thumbs up. That's it. <laughs> you know the routine. We'd really appreciate it, wouldn't we? We would indeed. And we would like to say thanks to Martin Mendes for this question because he asked us this and that is why we're doing this video today. Yep, thanks Martin. So, we are going to break down how much it costs us to stay in the Algarve for at least a month. So, first up, Dean. So, of course, we have to get there. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the flights. Now, in our case, we go from Toronto to Faro. And we have two options that we can do. We can fly with TAP Airlines. Now, when we do this, we actually have to fly into Lisbon and then we have to wait normally about four or five hours and then we get another flight yep. down to Faro. The other option is, and we really quite like this one, is that we can fly with Air Transit direct to Faro. Now, they are both very similar in price. And when we last went, it cost us a total of 1388 for the two of us or 694 Canadian dollars each. So that's what gets us to the Algarve. <laughs> the only trouble with Air Transat is that um, up until 2020, they, no. they, used to, they didn't start flying into Faro until March. No. Um, but the last time we went there, we were on their first flight that uh, arrived in January. Yeah, so that's that is great. a big, big advantage. So you're, you're getting there five hours quicker than with TAP, but they're both basically the same price. Yeah. So once we're in Faro team, the one thing that we really want to do is get a car rental. Absolutely. So maybe you can tell everybody, Norm, a little bit about the car rental. Okay, Tina. So we, we pick up a car at Faro Airport. It's not in the terminal building. It's actually in the car park, in car park four. It's like a, a mobile uh, building, and there's a whole bunch of different companies rent uh, a desk space in there, basically, for their reps. So we meet our contact, our contact there because we email him before we arrive, tell him what flight we're on, and he brings a car because mm -hmm. there are no cars parked there ready to, uh, to rent. They're, they're brought from off-site. So he brings in a car for us. And we do a minimum rental of 30 days, and he charges us just 12 euros a day for the month. We decline the collision damage waiver because we use our credit card insurance from MasterCard. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things they tell us to do. Yeah. Decline CDW. So that's what we do, and it works extremely well. So we uh, this this last time with Air Transit, it was perfect. We got off the flight. It's just a short walk to this car park. Uh, our car was there, mm -hmm. and uh, we it's... just signed a few pieces of paper, and away we went. And, and we've had a relationship with this uh, gentleman for three years three. now. Which it's very convenient, isn't it? Now, just one thing, that price gets you a manual transmission car. The cars are about four to five years old. And they're small econo cars. So the advantage with that is it doesn't take much gas. No, it's great, isn't it? So once we have the car team, we need somewhere to lay our head at night. Absolutely, we do. <laughs> And so for us, we generally will look for a one-bedroom apartment. We found that this suits us better. So we get the bedroom, we get a kitchen, and we get a lounge area, and hopefully a balcony with a nice view. Mm -hmm. 
Um, what is really important for us is to get a place that includes the utilities. By that we mean we look for a place that includes the heat, mm -hmm. the air conditioning, and also the internet. Now, you need the heat because it can get chilly. In, so you do, put, yeah, you do need to put the heat on and it can get really hot. So we've used the air conditioning too. But one thing that we really like is the internet, isn't it? Because we can use it in our apartment yeah. or in the whole of the rest of the area. How can we do YouTube without the internet, Tim? <laughs> so the one that we have stayed at for this example, we stayed at the Hotel Lunar Sol AQ. This is part of a chain hotel in the Algarve, and it cost us $1,800 Canadian, inclusive of all the utilities. It was a great deal, it was. wasn't it? And that was for 30 days? Yes, it was great. That was very good. The one thing you have to be careful about Portugal is it's very expensive for hydro, for electricity. Oh, yes. yeah. So what you'll find is if you go to some of the independent um, Airbnb type uh, renters, you, they're not going to give you the hydro in wintertime included because it is expensive. Mm -hmm. Or if they do, they might cap it at $100. And then anything over that, you may well be yeah. paying for. So it can add up, can't it? It, yeah. it really can. So you do want to, wherever possible. And that's why we went to the hotel in the end. Yeah. Because it was all included. There was no, no extras at all. We did look at a few other places, didn't we, that included heat and um, the air, but they didn't include internet, which for us is no good, is mm -hmm. it? So it worked out really well. So then we need to uh, look at food. And the one thing we found with Portugal is the variety of food is absolutely tremendous. The fresh produce, uh, seafood, uh, the amount of fish that you can buy. So we pretty much budget the same as we do back home in Canada. We're just living as though we are in Canada in many instances, mm -hmm. shopping locally, either going to the local markets or the local supermarkets, and very competitive in price. So that shouldn't be a surprise. No. And, and we, then, sorry, Tim. Sorry, I was going to say, we do a lot of our own cooking, don't we? We do. We prefer yeah. that than yeah. eating out, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. But every now and then, we, we, we like to have lunch out yeah. uh, that we haven't made ourselves. So there are a lot of individually owned cafes that will make homemade food or sandwiches or one of our favorites was the grilled cheese to be honest with you oh we loved that didn't we and it's so yeah. so cheap a, yeah. a, a one euro fifty for a grilled cheese sandwich yeah or, and... or we found another place in uh, albufeira that's a traditional portuguese restaurant had a dish of the day it was around ten fifty, so oh, we shared it yeah that was beautiful wasn't it it really yeah. was so don't be afraid of eating out. Um, the only proviso we would say is if you're looking at that fresh fish and you go to a, <laughs> a fish restaurant, a, an upscale fish restaurant, where you're going to have fine dining and you may be down by the waterfront, when they have displays of fish, the, uh, you can go and look and say, I'll have that one. They are dead. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, and then they take them out to a charcoal grill outside and cook them for you. Looks right great, them. doesn't it? Absolutely yeah. beautiful. <laughs> they put herbs and oil on yeah. it. But those fish are priced by the kilo. So if you see a nice big one that you like, you, you, you might get a big price on the cost of the bill when it comes. You, you may well. Do be careful. Whereas you could buy a very similar one, say in a grocery store um, that has a restaurant area, also has fish dishes, yep. um, like Pingo Dochi Norm, and you can pick your fish there at lunchtime and it would be a lot less in value, but you would still get a nice experience, wouldn't you? Yeah, if you just wanted to try a dish and, yeah. uh, and the supermarkets, uh, the, these restaurants, the Pingo Doshe is, uh, it, it, we, we think it's a very good uh, restaurant. Mm -hmm. and, and then once you've tried the dish, you can go to a nicer restaurant and possibly have a, a better experience. 
And remember, Norm, that you can always get those either $1 beer or those carafes of wine with your dinner and lunch. You can. Uh, <laughs> Obtaining alcohol in Portugal is not difficult at all. No, in, in, fact, a... in fact, McDonald's uh, yeah, sell get... beer as yeah, well. You can get your burger and beer. So, yeah, we do like having uh, a, a little glass of wine every now and then, especially if we're not driving. Yeah. So, the other expensive thing gas. Is gas, petrol. yeah. Or what should we say petrol? Yeah. Um... Gas to go in the car, isn't it? Um, it is. Now, on this last trip, we really didn't do lots of driving. We were just tootling up and down the Algarve. On some of our other trips that we've done, um, we have been away for weekends to Seville and Lisbon. Mm -hmm. But this time, we stayed quite near to Albufeira. And a lot of days, we didn't drive at all. No. No, no, we didn't. We just had the car right, there yeah. for the convenience of it. And to go to the grocery store and, and pick up your groceries or oh, yeah. go to maybe a, a more remote beach area or a little town that we haven't been to. But we didn't go all the way to uh, Sagres or no. Cape St. Vincent. Not this time, because we'd already done those, hadn't we? We had. So yeah. that resulted in a, a, a petrol gas bill in our rental car of... $85 Canadian, because it's, yeah. it is a little car and it's very gas efficient. It is, although gas can be expensive there, can't it, Norm? It is. And if you do lots of driving and if you have a bigger car, it will cost you a lot more money. So you've just got to um, allocate your costs for that. And remember, you have to return your car to the airport with the same amount of gas that was in there when you picked it up. So we usually just stop on the way to the airport mm -hmm. and just top her up. So it's in, in, good to go. it is important when you go to your rental car at the airport to photograph it. We yeah. photograph uh, <laughs> so each, we each side of it, yeah. maybe the, the roof, uh, the front, uh, the wheels. Um, and uh, we also photograph the, uh, the instrument panel uh, so it shows us where the gas gauge was. Just, just saying. Be prepared. I was a Boy Scout. And basically, that is kind of what a month um, costs us, doesn't it? So I know we haven't added it up, team, but any idea what the, I, the cost I'm, was? I'm going to say roughly it's around 4,200 Canadian for it all. For, um, for a month. And if you, month stayed for for two, two, yeah. if you stayed for two months, obviously you don't pay the, any more for the flights. No. So uh, it would become more cost effective in that respect. But we do encourage yeah. you, if you're thinking about Portugal, it's, uh, it is a good option. Yeah. Um, English widely spoken in the Algarve yeah. and, um, yeah. and, and safe. We, we always keep saying that because, yeah. you know, if you haven't been to a country before, you have no idea. We didn't. Yeah, it's we something feel... we, yeah, we take care of security and feeling safe where we travel very seriously, don't we? We do indeed. And we definitely feel very safe when we visit Portugal and we would thoroughly recommend it. So that's our take on spending winter in the Algarve and how much it costs. And thank you to Martin Mendes for that question that gave us the inspiration to do this video. So if you have... Any ideas for future videos? Leave them in the comments section below. And thank you so much for watching. Yeah, and we hope everybody's staying safe. And keeping well. And until the next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.